At the surface, most people view Battle for Bikini Bottom as a solid 3D collectathon platformer. Digging deeper though, you can discover Battle for Bikini Bottom is a very broken game when pushed to its limits. Not only that, but there are also quite a few very strange and confusing oddities present. Today we're going to be taking a look at what Battle for Bikini Bottom is capable of, and some strange conundrums inside. The Out of Bounds Glitch Battle for Bikini Bottom's levels are designed for a straight shot through to the end, while also having things to do along the way like collect socks or destroy robots. When the player decides to step out and see what's beyond the playing field, however, they are met with Hans, the out of bounds detection. When grabbed, Hans takes the players back to their last checkpoint. That is unless we get rid of him. To disable Hans, the player has to go to the Bikini Bottom hub. Once there, move SpongeBob to the left of the Jellyfish Field's taxi cab and wait. After a few seconds, Hans will detect that you're out of bounds and grab you. Once grabbed, push the A button when prompted to enter Jellyfish Fields. You'll notice that even when you took the taxi to Jellyfish Fields, you still end up in Bikini Bottom. Do the exact same thing this time, but don't bother hitting any buttons, because once Hans grabs you, you actually end up in Jellyfish Fields this time. And just like that, Hans is gone, and you're free to roam about the level as you please. What's great about this glitch is that you can perform it in any level with the taxi pad. Keep in mind certain areas are still restricted. Going on the brown sand for too long re-enables Hans, and you'll have to perform the glitch again. That is unless you want to take the glitch even further. To make this easier, start by playing on a new file and enable the save feature. Perform the Hans disable glitch and head to Jellyfish Fields. Make your way down the right path and you'll find a sock overlooking a spatula. Normally when players attempt to jump down and grab the spatula, they are met with Hans taking them back into bounds. Under normal circumstances, players are supposed to climb up the hill and talk to Gary, then use the bungee to reach the spatula. However, since we have Hans disabled, we can jump off this ledge and reach the spatula. Since the animation for collecting the spatula didn't get a play because we drowned, SpongeBob will spawn at his last checkpoint, and the animation will play as it's supposed to. Funnily enough, we actually have access to the pause screen while in this animation. We can use the pause screen to warp to Bikini Bottom, and just like that, we have pushed the Out of Bounds glitch to its max. Now we don't have to worry about the brown sand or anything else for that matter. We are free to go anywhere we want without worrying that Hans will grab us. To get rid of the glitch, simply collect a spatula of your choice. Hans will still be disabled, but the save glitch will also be disabled. So be a little more careful when traveling out of bounds. Skipping boss fights. Battle for Bikini Bottom has three mini-bosses, being King Jellyfish, Prawn, and the Flying Dutchman, as well as three main bosses, Robot Sandy, Robot Patrick, and Robot Spongebob. The ones I'm going to be talking about are King Jellyfish, Prawn, the Flying Dutchman, and Robot Spongebob. The less said about Robot Sandy and Robot Patrick, the better. First, let's start with King Jellyfish. This boss fight takes place within the first level of the game and is fairly easy. His patterns are simple, however, when you hit him, he spawns more jellyfish each time. Come to find out, if you don't even fight King Jellyfish until you've unlocked the cruise missile, you can come back to him and essentially skip the entire fight by quickly shooting him three times with the cruise missile. The developers didn't interpret you coming back with an Area 3 power-up to fight an Area 1 boss fight. Next is Prawn, the Flying Dutchman, and Robot SpongeBob, who all share a common theme. You can access debug triggers and completely skip their fights, and obtain their spatulas as well. All of the debug triggers are located directly above the player's spawn. They are all essentially out of bounds, but you don't need Hans disabled for any of them. The reason some boss fights have debug triggers and others do not is because different developers worked on different boss fights. Some devs left in their debug triggers while others didn't. Stunning a Monsoon Battle for Bikini Bottom has a lot of unique robots. The Monsoon, who is first seen in Goolagoon, makes an appearance in nearly every level after that. Since they are one of the only robots who are exclusive to the air, the Monsoon cannot be stunned by Patrick's slam attack. In Battle for Bikini Bottom, Patrick has a move that stuns some of the larger robots like the Hammerbot and the G-Love, and destroys some of the smaller robots like the Fodder. However, there is a location in Kelp Caves where Patrick can get on the same level as the Monsoon. Once he uses his slam attack on the robot, the game flat out crashes. This is because the game doesn't know what to do when the Monsoon gets stunned, as the robot wasn't given an animation. This is until a runner by the name of Jared's Giants made a video showing off a unique property in the Goolagoon Caves. By slamming into the bus stop as Patrick and changing into Spongebob right after, Spongebob gains the odd effect where every robot he runs into is harmed by the slam that was stored when changing characters. I like to compare it to the infinite sword glitch in Ocarina of Time, as in that game it acts more or less the same here. Hilariously, reaching the monsoon while in this state doesn't crash the game and actually visually stuns the robot. It still, however, does not have an exclusive stun animation. Stunning 
small oversights. The last thing I want to touch on in this video is the many strange and virtually unnoticeable oversights the developers left in. After boarding the Flying Dutchman ship, the goal is to get to the robot ship and destroy all the lasers. Once that's done, the player has to go back to the Dutchman ship and fire all the cannons so the robot ship goes down. Or so you would think. It turns out, you don't even have to go to the robot ship at all. You can just activate the cannons on the Dutchman ship. The cutscene shows that the cannons fired did nothing as the lasers took them out. But opening the pause screen shows a warp that was created to fight the Flying Dutchman. This next one is virtually unnoticeable. Whenever the player gets hit, after the damage animation plays, they have a single frame to perform a certain action, be it a jump or a bash. This one frame where you can perform an extra jump or gain extra height is great for creating massive shortcuts. Skipping the sock and Goolagoon that takes an eternity's Patrick can be done in a few seconds if you choose to perform a triple jump near this lifeguard tower. Another instance of a one-frame trick being abused is in Sandy Stream. Normally the player has to traverse the longest slide in the entire game in order to get the spatula on top of the acorn. However, if the player performs a one-frame bash on the slide along with a separate trick that boosts your movement speed, it's possible to skip the entire slide. This last one is really cool to show off. In the level rock bottom, there is a shiny object hidden underneath Mrs. Puff. For years, people didn't know what the shiny object was for. Eventually, collecting it revealed that it was a debug trigger to signal the player had collected all six paintings hidden around rock bottom. The developers once again left in another debug trigger. To access this purple shiny object, the player has to perform a trick called lag clipping. Once the shiny object is collected, Mrs. Puff will think you have collected all of the artwork and give you a golden spatula. 